This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you don't miss the latest from the Disney theme parks all around the world. But here now the news for May 10th, 2023. The last of the 50th anniversary bunting has been removed from Cinderella Castle, leaving only the golden ribbon turret toppers. The last two pieces of drapery-like bunting uh, were on the front two towers of the castle. The bunting was royal blue and gold with large blue gems. Uh, who can forget when one of those blue gems fell off because it was only held by a command strip. One of my favorite stories of all time. Uh, but crews will now need a crane to remove the golden ribbons from the turrets, and one has already arrived. In fact, it's parked right behind Cinderella Castle with construction walls around it, which uh, is a thing we used to see when they used to put up the Cinderella Castle dream lights for Christmas, but now uh, just so they could use the crane to take down those uh, really high up golden ribbons as we get rid of the, the last vestiges of the world's most magical celebration, the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World, which, by the way, ended months ago, <laughs> it ended over a month and a half ago, and we're still removing it. A new Cinderella Coach-themed popcorn bucket will be available as part of the Disney 100 Celebration uh, Collection at the Magic Kingdom tomorrow. Disney has announced a new popcorn bucket uh, will be available again at Magic Kingdom. It's already available at Disneyland. The container is modeled after Cinderella's magical pumpkin coach and is platinum and dark blue to match the Disney 100 platinum color palette. A sea emblem is on the side of the doors, and Cinderella in her wedding dress looks out the windows. It's the same design as the 70th anniversary Cinderella bucket that was released at Disneyland, just in new colors. And way back in 2015, this was released in its intended colors at both Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts. Uh, she was not in the wedding dress for that bucket, though. So this is version three of, of the coach. I, I've said this on the show before. I hate the fact that they just keep making the same buckets in different colors. Um, the Skyliner one's probably okay because they represent actual different Skyliners, and they did change the strap, in fairness. But the the balloons and the coach, and I'm 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 tired of those. I, I think it's time to move on. Make make something new, new design. A new Madame Leota crystal ball is available from Crystal Arts, the Arebus Brothers shop on Main Street USA at the Magic Kingdom. It's $275. Uh, the metallic stand for the crystal ball is sold separately for $49. The crystal ball shows a three-dimensional image of Madame Leota's floating head. The stand plugs into the wall, casting a glow into the crystal ball. The Japan Pavilion at Epcot will soon be home to a new eatery. The Shikisai Sushi Izakaya is a table service restaurant offering a festive dining experience in a shareable izakaya style. It's ostensibly replacing the Tokyo Dining, which closed last November in the Japan Pavilion. That's uh, the one that was located uh, to, the, uh, was that? to the right side of Teppan Ito, um, upstairs where they had the two table service establishments above Mitsukoshi. At Shikisai Sushi Izakaya, guests will experience seasonal favorites of Japan. With each month comes a different celebration from hanging uh, Tenzaku to celebrate Tanabata in July to savoring moon viewing dumplings in September. A cultural representative from Japan will guide guests through each festival. Hand painted artwork and lanterns highlight some of Japan's natural wonders, and there'll be a trellis inspired by the roof of the Phoenix Hall in Kyoto. Uh, there'll be a full menu with sushi and teppan items, uh, as well as an open sushi bar and grill. And guests sitting at the sushi bar will be able to watch chefs make the sushi. Shik uh, Shikisai Sushi Izakaya is located again on the second floor of the Japan Pavilion with views of the World Showcase Lagoon and uh, fireworks shows. And here's a preview of some of the menu items. Highlights from the sushi bar include the uh, Kobore Sushi, the Tokyo Nigi Roll, the Funamori, and the Monster Roll. Kabore sushi translates to overflowing sushi. The dish features negitoro and uh, nakaochi tuna paired with salmon roe and green onion. The Tokyo Nigi roll uh, combines green onion tempura rolled with tuna tataki and topped with jalapeno aioli, shredded carrot, and sliced jalapeno. The funamori features sashimi and sushi arranged on a boat-shaped platter. It's served with the pomp and the boat procession of the famous Tenjin Matsuri, an Osaka festival honoring Sugawara Michizane, the Japanese god of learning. Shikisai will also feature small dishes in the style of Japanese izakaya, a style of casual pub-style restaurant with an emphasis on sharing plates of food while enjoying drinks and conversations with friends. 
Shiki Sai will also feature small dishes in the style of Japanese izakaya, a type of casual pub-style restaurant with an emphasis on sharing plates of food while enjoying drinks and conversations with friends. Shiki Sai's menu includes karaj chicken, uh, salmon uh, miso yaki, and uh, tomato salad with avocado. The grill will serve up various options, including uh, okonomiyaki, a Japanese savory pancake made with a batter of flour, eggs, and water filled with shredded cabbage and bacon, and then topped with tangy okonomiyaki sauce, mayonnaise, aonori, uh, bonito flakes, and pickled ginger. Uh, Shiki Sai Sushi Izakaya will open this summer. Um, I love this idea. I, I have been less than enamored with Mitsukoshi's attempts at, at Japanese dining the last several years. I feel like they've really gone downhill, especially post-COVID. I really feel that way. I hope this, uh, I hope this breaks that chain of events. I hope this is above and beyond. This seems like a great idea. It's a nice, uh, people really, I, I think what people liked about Tokyo Dining was that it had sushi. I don't know if they necessarily liked the sushi quality of Tokyo Dining, but I know they like that. And then having the um, sort of Japanese bar food culture present as well as this cultural representative thing i'm on board with that that could be a lot of fun um i'm in, i'm intrigued about this trellis thing trellis is usually something that's outside so i'm curious if they're going to use some of the uh exterior space which i know a lot of people will often uh end up using as a place to watch fireworks in the evening but i'm curious if they're finally going to use some of that for dining which i mean that would be amazing if you could sit out there and eat on that patio that would be uh, incredible, but it doesn't make it clear here, but I'm, I'm hopeful that's what they're doing. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. The best part is their concierge services are 100% free. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT and the team will design your next magical vacation from Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. Of course, um, they're of great help if you're going to be uh, booking something with the Disney dining plan that's coming back and as always is semi-complicated, so maybe you need some help. Uh, I highly recommend our friends at Be Our Guest. After a guest shared details with us a few weeks ago, we were able to attend the Oogie Boogie's Villainous Nightmare Bash, which is aboard the Disney Wish cruise ship. You can view our video of the specifically 18 years and older event. Uh, you can watch that right here uh, on our YouTube channel. You can read all about it on our website. And um, it's quite a long video. We filmed the whole experience. It was, um, I think of the last several years, whether I think of Tokyo, Paris, Disney World, Disneyland, Cruise Line, whoever, um, I think it is one of the most creative and interesting entertainment pieces I've seen in the last several years. It's a really interesting, I think, it's probably a proof of concept for them. They probably want to see if this is going to work uh, either on more cruises or maybe um, even beyond the Disney Cruise Line. But it is, it has a pre-show experience and then a really well thought out and well produced dance party portion with Oogie Boogie and so, so many great video uh, pieces with tons of Disney villains, some of which you, I have never seen in my life in, in sort of uh, live action face character form. Uh, think of the, a couple come to mind off the top of my head is uh, Yzma and Kronk. And, um, it's really interesting and cool. It's worth a watch. And uh, I am intrigued to see if this is in fact a proof of concept. We'll see more of this, but, but please go check out the video. It's, it's, it's worth the view. Also, right here on the channel, we have the uh, Uncharted Adventure, the uh, app game that finally debuted after we took our initial Wish Cruises last summer. It was delayed heavily, um, and maybe there's some indication as to why it was delayed heavily if you watch our video. It is an hour and a half long, but it is us taking you through the entire experience, including what I think is the coolest ending that's ever been done for any of these interactive games, whether it's Sorcerer of the Magic Kingdom or um, you know, Pirate's Adventure or whatever. Um, an actual big show style ending with all the guests gathered in one place and Disney characters. And it, it's, it's pretty wild and interesting. You can also watch that right here on the channel. During Wednesday's Central Florida Tourism Oversight District Board of Supervisors meeting, the board officially approved Glenn Gilzine Jr. as the new district administrator. Gilzine replaces John Class, who has been the administrator since January 2016, and will now act as a special advisor to the board. Class was named in Disney's federal lawsuit against Governor DeSantis and the board, so Gilzine may be added to the lawsuit as well. 
The board discussed Gilzine's compensation, proposing a $400,000 salary. The usual range uh, for this position is somewhere from 271000 to 453000 uh, Jacksonville pays 438000 Cape Canaveral 375 and Tampa over 500000 for the record. The $400,000 salary was decided based on the geographic size of the district, budgets, and Gilzine's responsibilities. He's being paid 45000 more than class was because he has more responsibilities and reports directly to legislature. Gilzine is the president and CEO of the Central Florida Urban League, which has the mission to end generational poverty by empowering Central Floridians to achieve social and economic equality through education, employment, and entre entrepreneurship. Gilzine is the chair of Florida's Commission on Ethics, a position Governor DeSantis appointed him to. The commission serves as the guardian of the standards of conduct for officers and employees of Florida and its political subdivisions and functions as an independent commission responsible for investigating and issuing public reports on complaints of breach of the public trust by public officers and employees. It also renders legally binding advisory opinions interpreting the ethics laws and implements the state's financial disclosure laws. In 2020, DeSantis appointed Gilzine to the Reopen Florida Task Force alongside Josh DeMauro, who was president of Walt Disney World at the time, and other business executives and government leaders. A new emergency room medical facility by Advent Health is set to open to the public this summer. The concept was first announced in 2021. It will soon be open to local residents as well as Central Florida visitors and Disney cast members. According to a recent Twitter post by digital journalist Ashley Carter, Advent Health ER at Flamingo Crossings Town Center is planned for a summer 2023 opening. Concept renderings for the facility include decorative touches and references to Disney characters. The emergency room will be located near the western entrance gate of the Walt Disney World Resort. It, uh, it will function as a full-service emergency room to provide health care to Central Florida visitors and residents, including Disney cast members. In the concept art you're looking at now, Marlin and Nemo are positioned amongst a swirling school of seafoam colored fish. The walls are also painted to look like ocean waves. Uh, characters from Moana are depicted in the mural you're looking at now. The facility will provide emergency medical care and enhanced patient experience for resort guests, cast members, and the Central Florida community. It'll be approximately 19,000 square feet and have 24 private patient rooms. The ER will also have uh, respiratory therapy, diagnostic imaging, and a full-service laboratory. Uh, Advent Health and Walt Disney World Resort celebrated the groundbreaking of the new emergency room of Flamingo Crossings Town Center in early March. Destination D23 is headed back to the Walt Disney World Resort again this September, featuring panels and other exclusive fan events. But now some new functions have been announced for those unable to snag the coveted tickets, which of course sold out uh, nearly instantaneously. First off, if you can't make it to the event, don't panic. The entirety of the event will be live streamed online on D23.com. So no matter where you are in the world, you can still experience the exciting announcements which come from these events. Why did the rest of us buy tickets? I have no idea because now they seem valueless if you could just watch it online. Nonetheless, also exclusively for D23 Gold members, a special shopping experience will be set up at Disney's Contemporary Resort for those unable to attend the full event. Of course, those attending will be the get the first priority on shopping, uh, but D23 Gold members will still be able to pick up special merchandise from Mickey's of Glendale, the Walt Disney Company Store, and the Ink and Paint Marketplace. Disney said more details will be announced soon for this experience. A 33-year-old Oklahoma tourist had a drunken Epcot meltdown laying down on the ground in the rain, attacking a cast member and running backstage at the Mexico Pavilion. By the end of his blackout night, Patrick Delante of Cowita, Oklahoma, was arrested and charged with battery and trespass on property after receiving a warning. The incident happened on February 9th, according to the Orange County Sheriff's Office arrest report that took the department months to publicly release. Uh, Delahanty was hard to miss at Epcot because of the, uh, the man was dressed in a Hawaiian shirt, laying on the ground in the rain in World Showcase between Mexico and the Disney Trader Shop, uh, said the arrest report. A Disney guest experience manager intervened to see if he could offer any help. Quote, while waiting for a wheelchair, Patrick became aggressive, getting to his feet and shouting, the arrest report said. Next, Patrick picked up a stanchion, attempted to swing or throw it at the Disney guest experience manager, who was in fear of being struck. The stanchion picked up by Patrick was tethered to a second stanchion, preventing him from striking with it. Uh, Patrick picked up the stanchion a second time before slamming it to the ground. But next, Patrick picked up a table and threw it. The guest experience manager redirected other cast members away from the unruly scene, and that's when uh, Delahanty uh, attacked him, the report states. 
Patrick came up to the left side, uh, to his left side, and struck him across the face with his hand. Patrick pushed his head back on the follow through. Uh, Delahanty kept yelling as more cast members arrived to help. Uh, then he took off running into a backstage area of the Mexico Pavilion and attempted to enter one of the buildings. He didn't appear to get very far before he was caught by deputies. He was trespassed from Disney World and went to the hospital, the arrest report says. A Disney operations manager uh, corroborated with the guest services manager's account of that night and said he saw Delahanty, who was clearly intoxicated, take off his Hawaiian shirt, ball it up, and throw it at someone's chest, as well as throw a table over a railing. The arrest report is partially redacted, but it appears the operations manager also saw Delahanty strike the guest service manager. Delahanty wasn't arrested immediately. The guest services manager, whose name is redacted in the report, was focused on finishing his duties at Epcot that night and declined to pursue criminal charges right away, uh, which also described the manager as being confused. Uh, the next morning, the guest services manager was in pain and went to be treated at the Disney Health Services for what he learned were strained muscles in his neck, shoulder, and back. Uh, the manager ch uh, changed his mind and wanted to pursue criminal charges against Delahanty after this. And that same day, deputies tracked Delahanty down to Disney's Coronado Springs resort where, uh, resort, where he was staying with his family. Delahanty told law enforcement that he had visited Epcot the night before with a friend and drank alcohol. He recalled visiting a pub, but after that, he couldn't remember anything else that happened. He was arrested and taken to Orange County Jail. Delahanty has pleaded not guilty to its criminal charges, according to the Orange Circuit Court records. His attorney declined to comment on the pending case. Oh, man, don't worry. We've got more cases of guests behaving badly. A Florida woman was arrested, although she won't face any punishment, after she was accused of pushing several senior citizens in the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train queue this year at the Magic Kingdom. Two Maryland women ages 73 and 64 were in line for the popular Magic Kingdom roller coaster when they said Ebony McFarley, age 31, pushed past them to join the rest of her party. McFarley was a comp, uh, accompanied by four children. The incident happened in February, and the Sheriff's Department released the arrest report months later. The Maryland woman uh, held their places and refused to move, telling McFarley to wait in line like everybody else. Uh, McFarley became agitated and pushed her way past the two women. Uh, as she forced her way past them, McFarley scratched the 73-year-old woman's right arm with her fingernails, causing her to bleed. Both were adamant uh, that there was nothing haphazard or incidental about the contact Ebony made with them, the two Maryland women told the Sheriff's Department, the arrest report says. They said they were willing to testify in court and prosecute McFarley. There were multiple people in line who witnessed the altercation and then found themselves getting pushed by McFarley, too, when they intervened. A large family from Illinois saw what happened, and a 52-year-old woman confronted McFarley, telling her to not touch anyone. McFarley got physical again, pushing a 23-year-old Illinois woman into a wall and pushing past three males, ages 17, 22, and 72, as she advanced in the queue, says the report. The Illinois family was not hurt and did not want to prosecute. The 52-year-old took three photos on her phone, capturing snippets of the altercation as it unfolded. McFarley had a different take on the situation. She claimed she was the victim and had done nothing wrong when investigators interviewed her and two others in her group. Quote, they maintain that they felt they were being victimized and profiled because they are African American. Ebony maintained she did not batter or push anyone. She did express a concern that her children were touched during the incident. However, my investigation did not reveal any information to support this, said a deputy. Law enforcement believed McFarley had committed a battery and she was arrested and taken to Orange County Jail where she was transferred into the custody of the Orange County Corrections Department, says the report. Disney also trespassed her from Walt Disney World property. A battery charge was filed, uh, but the assistant state attorney's office decided this spring the case was not suitable for prosecution. Today's show is sponsored by Unlocked Magic, a Disney planning and dining website that will allow you to score impossible dining reservations at Walt Disney World, even when they are not showing as available on your My Disney Experience app. Now there's a new feature to enjoy. Unlocked Magic has unlocked wardrobes. With this service, guests will now be uh, given stylized outfit templates with clickable links that will allow them to purchase cute Disney-styled outfits uh, created by a professional Disney stylist. Each month, you'll find two new adult outfit options and two new child outfits, uh, which makes your Disney planning even easier. You can use code WDWNT to enjoy the entire system for free this month. You can find the link in our description. 
The Disneyland Paris Works Twitter page covering construction updates, refurbishments, permits, and more at the French Resort just released some new glimpses around the rear of Walt Disney Studios Park, where the most dramatic transformations are taking place of the ongoing expansion. Behind RC Racer and Toy Story Playland, Arendelle, the kingdom Anna and Elsa call home in Frozen, is taking shape, along with an extended promenade intended to connect to the original portions of the park. Construction cranes tower over the site with Val d'Europe and the Greater Marne Laval uh, in the background. Work is accelerating on all facets of development as progress on the park berm, the lake, show buildings, and Elsa's ice castle uh, become more discernible. A version of Frozen Ever After is taking shape as well, with the beginnings of concrete structures observable. And unlike Epcot, it will inhabit a more immersive and sprawling themed space. Shopping, dining, and character interactions will all occupy a Norse-inspired village as Elsa's snowy sanctuary rests atop a mountain range that is planned to rise 131 feet from the ground. The protruding columns rising above the other structures will be the foundations for these mountains. Bulldozers, excavators, and various items of landscaping equipment are shaping and sculpting the land in preparation for an anticipated 2025 opening of this next phase. The area in the picture you're looking at now is roughly around the vicinity in the artist renderings beyond RC Racer that will host gardens and a rotating boat ride based on Tangled. An Art Nouveau-inspired restaurant will also debut, offering panoramic views of the new lake and future attractions beyond the world of Frozen. Aerial photography from February appears to indicate the placement of this restaurant with a bare concrete plot wedged between Toy Story Playland and the construction site. This summer, families visiting Tokyo Disney Resort can help uh, get some elbow grease under their belt with a new summer-only vacation package that allows kids to become custodial cast members for a day. Oh, this is the greatest thing ever. This new vacation package is on sale as a two-day, one-night package, which includes the special experience for kids ages 4 to 12 on the second day. Families can book this special package for visits between July 7th and August 30th, 2023. The 60-minute experience goes all the way. New cast member kiddos will change into child-sized custodial, uh, custodial costumes at Tokyo Disneyland. Uh, in the past, this program has been offered at Disney Sea, uh, But they'll learn how to keep the park clean and take care of guests. Real custodial cast members will uh, teach children the pillars of the Disney experience and the best ways to keep the park clean through sweeping and other custodial cast duties. At the end of the program, every participant gets a special medal and to take uh, commemorative photos with both the cast members and their parents. The package also includes one night at the Tokyo Disneyland Hotel, two line skip tickets per park for select attractions, viewing for Believe Sea of Dreams or Big Band Beat, a special treat at Tokyo Disney Sea, and breakfast at the Sherwood Garden Restaurant uh, within the Tokyo Disneyland Hotel. This plan is only available for families with kids ages 4 to 12 on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays in July and August. Prices per guest vary uh, from $545 to about $1,052 U.S. and are available through the Tokyo Disney Resort Reservations website. Shockingly, this is not the first time they've even offered this summer vacation package. It made uh, appearances previously in 2015 and 2018. I am so sad this is only for kids. I would do this in a heartbeat to, to see a little bit of the procedures of the Tokyo Disney Resort cast members who are... I mean, far and away the most efficient and friendly Disney cast members in the world. Um, it'd be fantastic. And a controversial statement I like to say, I think Disney company managers should be sent to Tokyo Disney Resort to take this program. I think they should, they should see how this is done. Uh, maybe specifically custodial managers at uh, the U.S. Disney parks, um, where things could be a little cleaner than they used to be. Um, I think they could learn a lot. But um, I love this. It's, it's so cool. And I'm super jealous. For the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at Patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets like our upcoming Unscrupulous 16th event coming up in July to celebrate 16 years of WDWNT.com and more. Special shout out to all of our WIGS members who make this show happen every week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of you today. And have a great big beautiful tomorrow. WDW News Tonight is our weekly comedy show combining the news of the week, comedy segments, thoughtful discussions, insane characters, parody commercials, games, and more.
Watch live on Thursdays at 9 p.m. and become a Wigs member to get access to a bonus post show. Watch WDW News Tonight episodes anytime and live on YouTube or get the audio-only version on iTunes and other podcast services.